Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich here. Uh, back with another edition of the Ankle Cast. I believe this is Ankle Cast 8. Although I could be mistaken, because, you know, there's not a whole lot to tell them apart. Um, but anyways, yeah, uh, I'm on my way to work here, and uh, I'm tired, so it's a good thing to have ankle cast to do. It keeps me awake. I, I can't fall asleep while I'm talking, usually. Although I guess it depends on just how tired I get. Um, but yeah, so I'm on my way to work, and uh, uh, updating uh, the stuff that I've been talking about. Um, I finished that story that uh, I started writing in the uh, waiting room at the uh, the car shop a couple weeks ago. I just finished it yesterday. So now I'm able to have another ankle cast so I don't have to get on here and report complete and utter failure. But yeah, I finished it. And um, I don't know if it's good. Um, I don't even know if it's worthwhile whatsoever. But uh, you'll probably hear it on the Dune Steve anyways, whether it's worthwhile or not. I don't know. We'll have to see maybe Riss will throw a fit. Did I say Riss? I think I did. Maybe Rish will throw a fit if it really sucks enough to keep us from doing it. But, you know, I think he might just let it slide because he would feel bad if I threw a fit about his story. So <clears throat> possibly you may hear it even if it sucks. <laughs> we'll have to see. Then you guys can all tell me, hey, that story sucked. Why did you force us to listen to that? Um... Anyways, yeah, so I finished it up. It's uh, it's a short one. It's short enough that it could be an entry into the uh, triple word score. It's that short. Of course, I'd have to have the triple words. So uh, we'll... Uh, I probably should have stopped. Oh, totally should have stopped. I ran a red light there. Hard to judge, but I didn't want to stop, so I kept going. Well, let's just hope there's no cops, especially considering that my car is still not registered. Uh, yeah, that problem that it was having. I, I think last time I was on here I said that it was starting to look like maybe it was getting better. And it was starting pretty much every time. Well, it's not. It's gotten much, much worse in the last week. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really frustrating to have to sit in your car for 10 minutes or more, turning the key over and over and over again until finally the car decides, oh, oh, that's what you meant, and it starts up. Um, and it's really, really frustrating because it eventually always starts, and so we keep not getting it fixed because, you know, we don't have the money for it. And... Uh, we can get by with it as it is, then we get by, and ugh. I don't know. It's really frustrating. It's frustrating for my daughter, who's really, um, she, she is, I don't know how to describe her, maybe a teacher's pet or something like that. She really dislikes being late for school, and it happens a lot now because the dumb car doesn't start when we go to get in it. I think I need to, uh, get them riding their bikes as much as possible. It looks like the weather might be changing enough that I can start having them do that. But I think her bike has a flat tire. I'll need to get a tire on the way home. <coughs> Anyways, neither here nor there. Um, yeah, so um, that's what I'm doing with riding. I was just listening to some old outtakes. I was trying to get that Uber feed that I mentioned last time put together. And so I was listening to a bunch of old outtakes that we had and uh, one of them was the outtake where we talked about our broken mirror contest where me and Rish just threw out ideas at each other and uh, we were trying to decide what we would use as our premise and we wound up going with a child is proclaimed king or queen um, but it turns out to be more than just a game uh, that's the one we went with but there was a few other ideas that we mentioned and I just thought huh, I ought to take at least the one idea, which uh, it, it was interesting because Rich really liked it, although he wanted to save it just for us, uh, which we never did 
do anything with, but I was just thinking it might be cool to start writing on something like that um, right away um, and uh, have another story that I can be working on and getting, getting out and then, um, and then you know, get, get working also at the same time on getting the background of Sonny and Gray put together so that I can actually start writing and start going on that story. Really need to get going on it. Uh, I was thinking, you know, I, I was talking with Rish and thinking about why it is that, you know, he, he's kind of amazed that I'm able to get up at 6.30 every morning and go out and go running, but I can't get myself to write, which is so much easier and, you know, less sucky. Um, and I was thinking maybe I just need a goal, kind of like I have with running, where I have made the goal to run a marathon this year, and so I gotta train for it. It, it. It's coming up, you know, it's steadily approaching. And I, so far, I've only run six miles. No, sorry, not even that. Six miles is this Saturday coming up. I've only run five miles so far at what, any one time. And so, you know, I've got a long ways to go. And if I don't keep going on it, then it's gonna be a disaster when the marathon comes along. I, I was just thinking maybe I need a, a super overarching goal like that. Um, now I've never written a book before, a novel, a long piece, and I was wondering if maybe that's the goal that I should do. Maybe I need to say, okay, in 2013 I'm going to write a novel. Um, I don't know what novel's exact cutoff date. I think somewhere around like cutoff date, cutoff word count is. I think it's somewhere around 60,000 words, um, which I think I might be able to get out of Sunny and Gray, perhaps. Uh, so maybe I should use that and I should write my first novel in 2013, make that my goal, because I am Big Yanklovich and I am a writer. Um, when I go running, I'm a perspiring writer. But uh, <laughs> I'm an aspiring writer otherwise. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm considering that as, as a kind of overarching goal. So I think I'm going to start working on the, uh, the suicide drink story today because I got to write 250 words to get my points in the spreadsheet. I did some yesterday, and so I got to keep it up, get my chain going. And, uh, and, yeah, get going on that, really get working on it, and see if I can get going on Sunny and Gray again. I really would like to. I, it's a good story, I think, and it's something I don't want to just go away because I'm too lazy to do it. Because I have a lot of ideas that are still just hanging around, and uh, they've kind of gone away because I've been too lazy to just do them. They're there but they're probably never going to get written because, you know, it's just the way it is. Once you lose the excitement for an idea, sooner or later it just stops, uh, you know, being a real possibility. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's how writing is going. I, I finished another story, so that gives me sort of two. I don't know if a uh, 10th album rewrite counts as a story for 2010. Uh, I mean, 2013. It was originally written in 2010, and all I did was add to it to make it longer and worse. Uh, so I've got a story that I finished, um, and uh, how's my ru my running is going pretty good. I don't know. Today was really hard out there running. I'm, I've kind of hit a bit of a wall where. Um, I'm getting like shin splints and, and that kind of stuff. I think what I need to do is get myself a new pair of shoes. Um, cause my other shoes just aren't working for me anymore. They're causing me pain. I mean, not as I run on them, but when I'm done, my leg will be pain and I'll have pain all the way up in like my hip or down in my ankle 
or on my heel or in just some weird places. And um, I think I need to get a new pair of shoes and I probably need to do it soon. I actually wore my old shoes that I haven't worn in like six months. Uh, the last two times I went running and yeah, this morning, oh man, it was painful. I kept having to stop running and just walk for a little bit because like from my knees down, my shins and everything was just hurting. Um, I'm afraid that, because see, here's what happened to me. I think, I think that this is the origin of my problem. When my son, who is now 12, was still just a little toddler, he's probably one year old, less than two, maybe two years old still, or already. Um, when he was that age, we were at a park and I had him sitting on my lap and we were swinging on a swing. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun to jump off of the swing when it's in full height, you know, and land uh, with my son. I think he'll probably think that's pretty fun. One of those things that you used to do when you're a kid, but you kind of give it up. I mean, I guess you give up swinging on swings when you get older. It's one of those things that just has less appeal or something when you're an old fart. Um, but anyway, so I decided to do this. I swung, I jumped off of the swing when it was at a high arch, um, high arc. Uh, it wasn't high, high. I mean, I only flew maybe six feet in the air altogether, probably less. But anyways, when I came down and landed, my knee kind of made this and uh, it hurt. And I did something to it. That was my right knee. At least I think it was my right knee. It may well have even been my left knee. I don't know which knee it was. But yeah, it hurt really bad. And I limped around for several days. And I went to the doctor thinking maybe I'd, you know, I don't know, blown my knee out somehow or something like that. And they're just like, no, nah, you're fine. Quit being a wuss. Um, but they did send me to. Uh, like a physical therapist who like would knead on my muscles which hurt like frick man you would think getting massage on your muscles would be nice but it was not it hurt like a mother fussed uh anyways um yeah she kept telling me oh yeah you need to stretch like this and do this stuff to stretch and get your self back in order and I you know as lazy as I am with writing I was the same way with the stretching I would do it some days um, but uh, I didn't do it that much and uh, after a few weeks you know we did she, she would knead on my muscles and whatnot and then finally she's just like okay you're done and I'm just like but I still feel like crap and she's like yeah well there's nothing else that I can do for you so uh you know, keep stretching, keep working on it, and, uh, you know, someday you'll feel better. <laughs> Basically, was what happened. And so, uh, I still kind of stretch, but kind you know, it was one of those things where as time goes by, it stops hurting as much. Even if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it kind of stops hurting. And I think what I started doing was walking a little bit different you know what I mean like you you compensate for an injury if you have one you start like walking a little different and I think I just started doing that and when you walk it's not a big deal because you're walking and it's not a uh, high energy high craziness kind of a thing but when you run it's different and I think when I run long enough you know it's it starts to hurt but only in my right leg my right leg is always a little weird I'll try on shoes and the left shoe will feel great but the right shoe feels like there's something sticking me at the bottom of my feet and I actually have to try on lots of shoes every time I go to buy shoes until I find some that don't feel that way and then of course like the next day I put them on and they feel that way it's just super frustrating I don't know what to do about it I wonder if I could still go to some kind of rehabilitation, you know, athletic kind of rehabilitation place. There's a place that always is advertising on the radio, call themselves the Orthopedic Specialty Hospital, 
Um, I don't know if that would be a place. Maybe I should check into them and see if they could possibly help me out. I don't know. I would like to be able to do this thing, you know, to make this run all the way in this marathon, but I'm afraid. I'm really fearing right now that my body's just too foobar to do that. That I messed myself up and never fixed it, and it's going to be that way forever. I hope not. I hope that's not the case. Um, because I want to succeed. I want to make it all the way to the end of the 26 miles, so we'll see how that goes. I may have to just go to the store today and get myself some new shoes, though. Um, yeah, uh, that's kind of what's going down. I can't remember if there's other things that I would report in on. It seems like running and writing has been my reporting. Oh, I was going to mention, I never did mention this, I don't think, um, but I've been doing this video with my running uh, as part of my push to run a marathon. I made a goal to run 500 miles in 2013, and uh, I decided that I would make a YouTube video out of this whole process. And it turns out it's actually going to be a few YouTube videos. I started, um, I've been working on one. I take my camera with me when I go running, and I s just like set it on a fence post or on a, an electric box or just on the sidewalk or something, and I turn on the video thing and get a, pic, a, a video of myself running. I'll run past the camera um, and then I'll turn it off and take it home. And I upload those and, and I've been combining them into this video. Um, not too long ago I took all those things and, and I started editing the video and I really like it. It's really a cool video. I don't know if everybody else who sees it will think it's as cool as I think it is, but yeah, I love it. I've showed it to like everybody that I know that will sit through it. And uh, the funny thing about it is it's it's really motivational. Um, I want to finish the video, so it actually makes me want to run more days. I could run just four days a week, but I make sure to run five days a week instead, just so that I can get to the end. I'm making a video that goes right now to 100 miles. And then I'm going to make another one that's 100 to 250, and then another one that's 250 to 500. Um, and yeah, this 100 mile video, I just want to get to 100 miles. I think I'm at like 68, no, I did, uh, I did three more this morning, so probably 71 I think I'm at. And within a couple of weeks, I should be done. Um, I think not this Saturday, but next Saturday I'll be done as long as I'm able to run every day, as long as the shin splints or something don't put me down. Um, but yeah, that's something that uh, is coming. You can look forward to it. I will share it on my blog and stuff and put it out there so that you guys can see it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it'll be fun, I, I think. And I'm excited to share it with everybody because I really enjoy it. I love it. Um, but yeah, one last thing, I'll just tell a quick uh, funny story. I don't know if it's funny per se, but um, this morning when I got back from running, I uh, came walking up to the house and there were these strange footprints leading away from the house. And I saw them and I thought, what in the heck is that? They were kind of goop, you know, it was on the cement, but there was like this, this goopy kind of footprints that led away from the house, and they were really goopy close to the house, and then as they led away further and further, they got less and less goop, I guess, because the goop was coming off of the foot that was making it, and I just thought, what in the heck, and I opened the door, and I looked in there, and I didn't see anything that was like that that would have caused someone to leave goopy footprints, so I kind of put it out of my mind for a minute and I went and I got in I took a shower and stuff and then uh, I came out of the shower and my daughter says hey dad there's honey over here and I walk over and the bottom of our pantry is just a gigantic puddle of honey 
it was the worst thing I could I, I don't know one there was one time where our kids were screwing around when we weren't around my daughter grabbed the sugar and was like flinging it around like chasing the other kids around and like throwing sugar at them and then so they had a great big mess of sugar and so they thought oh we need to clean this up so they got sponges out got them wet and started trying to wipe up the sugar um, and that's the last last thing that you should do they didn't know this because they're kids but the last thing you should do with sugar you got to sweep it up you never wipe it up with something wet and so what they did instead was basically make syrup out of this sugar and they rubbed it all over the whole floor all over the whole house so it was so sticky that it was just Oh, it was disgusting. It was awful. And it wouldn't, you know, we kept mopping and remopping and remopping the floor. And it took probably like 10 mops to get all this sugar goop syrup off of the floor. And yeah, I'm afraid this honey mess may well be uh, nearly as disastrous. It was a lot of honey. I mean, I swear it was a puddle of honey the size of frigging Lake Huron. Um, the size of Lake Superior, the size of the Black Sea, yeah, it was really big, and honey is, oh, it's, I didn't even try and clean it up because I knew that I would not come close to having enough time to clean it up, and after cleaning it up, I would need a shower and probably have to wash the clothes that I was wearing as well it would just be sticky everywhere. I'm not sure what the best way to clean up a honey spill of that magnitude is. I'm thinking maybe get a spatula and keep scraping up the honey and dumping it into a bowl as you go. But the problem is there are things stored on the floor in our pantry and the honey has kind of spread out so it's all under the bottom of these things. I don't know if we'll be able to clean them off. I mean, you know, hot water will melt the honey away on some things, but like a basket, a wicker basket or, you know, whatever, is that going to melt away or is that ever going to come off or is that just got to be thrown out? I don't know, but uh, what a disaster that is. And yeah, the, I guess the footprints came from my son. I, I don't know how this happened because he was already gone to school when I got back from running. But what I guess is that he knocked the honey off of the shelf when he was getting a cereal out in the morning but didn't realize that the lid wasn't on tight and so the lid came off and the honey started, you know, dripping out. Because honey doesn't, you know, it's, it's really thick. It doesn't just spill out like apple juice or something. It's... It takes a long time to get that much honey out on the floor. So yeah, I'm guessing he must have just sat there and maybe eaten his breakfast and maybe gone and done some other things and then came in and noticed that and thought, oh no, because it was sitting up right when I found it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I feel bad for my poor wife. I had to call her and say, hey, I'm really sorry. I don't have time to clean this mess up. And she was just like, no, no, because I guess the baby made lots of messes yesterday and she was getting really sick and tired of running around cleaning things up. Um, uh, maybe we need to invest in a leash, a leash for all the children. I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, that's uh, some fun times for us is cleaning up a giant mess of honey. Anyways, uh time has expired for me it's time for me to go pulling into work here in just a second so thanks for listening to another astounding edition of the ankle cast um have a good week i'll talk to you later your mountain is waiting so get on your way